perfect. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. Hello. My name is Paula. I'm the host tonight. I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds to let everybody come in and then we'll get started. Meanwhile, I'm speaking from Sao Paulo in Brazil. I don't know where you guys are speaking from. So definitely put it in the chat so we can see where everyone is. Expect we'll get a lot of Latin Americans today. Also another quick um, FYI before we get started, you guys, um, we do take questions while our, our guest is speaking. So you don't have to wait until the end of the talk. So feel free to, if you have a question, if you're curious about anything that he said and you wanna get more in depth or you wanna learn something new, just put it in our chat box as well and we'll get to it as soon as possible, okay? So let's see where you guys are from. Mar del Plata, Argentina, hello, Mexico. Rio, Peru, nice. I'm actually current in Mexico City. Our talk is about Chicago, but you're in Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, until tomorrow. Yes. We have Caracas, hello, hello. Awesome. I think that's everyone for now. So let's get right to it. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We're very, very excited to talk to Caio Bachista tonight, who is a VP and creative director at Leo Burnett in Chicago. Uh, so Kaya, welcome and thank you so much for being here, even if you're in a hotel room. In <laughs> yes, that, that is definitely not the most exciting background to, to have in a, in that type of talk, but it uh, is just for today. Perfect. Uh, but uh, but I'm, I'm very, very excited to talk with you guys and share a little bit of my like expat story. I think um, just a, a little intern in the sense of like about the Miami school for me, I think I, I love this school it offered me in so many fronts, I guess. When I, when I started, I was like a, a decent designer, but then I was lacking like creative criteria. And I think Miami school definitely um, put the bar really high. Like I think there, there was moments in my career that I, ha I have the feeling that I was harder to approve an idea at Miami at school than it was like in an ages. At a job. <laughs> uh, at a job in Rio, but uh, so very, very happy to be here. So you did Miami ad school, what location? I did Sao Paulo and then I did a quarter away in Madrid. Awesome, great. Uh, so I'm gonna read a very quick bio on you because I'm, you know, then you can also introduce yourself more if you want, but just so people have sort of the the basics of Caio, the highlights of your of your career. Um, so Caio worked at TBWA, Wonderman Thompson, and Africa and other agencies in Brazil, with some time in between at Wonderman Thompson in Madrid, as you mentioned, then Jairez and Anthony in Berlin. I hope I said that right. And finally, Leo Burnett in Chicago. So he's won Ken Lions, DNAD Clio Awards, amongst many more. And his clients have ranged from Facebook to Mercedes-Benz to Sony and Coca-Cola. So that's uh, that's a very impressive resume. I'm going to put, um, so if, if you guys want to see a little bit more of his portfolio while he's speaking and his LinkedIn, I'm going to put both in the chat now so you can get to know a little bit more of his work too before we, while we were starting. So, well, so let's get started. So welcome again. Thank you for being here. And uh, we always start by asking our guests to talk about a favorite project or work of yours, something that stood out for you and any stories that you can share about the process itself so we can get to know your, your creative mind a little bit better. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Hi guys. Can you see? Let's yeah. see, yes. Cool. Uh, I think I'm going to start talking about. Uh, let me see if I can make it smaller. It helps. Yes. Um, so, talk about a project that uh, I'm going to bring just two projects to you guys today. One that I uh, that we did in Germany, another one that we did in uh, in the US. I, I always say we because I have a, a great copywriter uh, uh, partner, Andres Andergrus, uh, and then we've been working together for five years. So. Uh, 
I think in this profession is more about we than than I, right? So this was a this was a campaign made in Germany for like a, a global audience, and it was to launch a car called uh, CLA. And uh, I think the main side here was like buying a car is normally such a rational uh, decision. Like you think about like the, the size of the trunk or you, the motor or how much gas you're gonna spend. So this car was a uh, uh, is a sedan. Like there's like a lot of like design features, comfort features, like artificial intelligence and so on. So we understood that for someone that buy this car, we should like uh, play with their inner desires, right? Because if you were rational, you might not end up uh, buying this car. So we start treating like the, the young version of ourselves would be happy with our like current life. Like, do, do you think the, the 15 ver years old Kai would be happy with my, my, my actual choice? So we start thinking, cool, so how to, to bring this, this idea to life? So as I told you, I, I, I work with a really uh, talented writer, so we've been worked together. So we crafted this story in a way that this became, this story about like a teenager, like sort of like haunting a man became a short film, like a five minutes short film. Imagine like this boy appears in, 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 in this man lives, like the, the young version of him, at, asking about like uh, questioning about his decisions on food or in what type of job he has. And like the fact that he doesn't have a band anymore. So uh, there was, that was a really interesting project to work on. And uh, at the time we had, a, we had a awesome creative director, Alicia Botara, that helped, she helped uh, to sell that to the client. It was not easy to sell a five minute uh, short film. And then we picked an amazing director called Francois Rousselet. We shot that campaign in Miami. So what I'm going to show to you guys now it is the trailer of the of the of the short film. So the trailer became the 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 TVC like the TV commercial. And then we can see the full version um, on your portfolio, the full yes, five minutes. Can. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Can you hear me now? Imagine you meet your 16-year-old self. What would he say about you? Man, we changed so much. About your job. Your habits. Future people are obsessed with these things, huh? Your diet. Ugh. Your car. Buckle up. Make him proud. So yeah, that was the, can you hear me again? Yes. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, so, and obviously like a car launch is not, it's made of like many assets, right? Like uh, normally in Brazil, when I would work for, with, a, with like a car campaign, normally we would like receive the assets and the materials and we would work from that. But like in Germany, since we were working with like the global account, we had to develop like from the print ads to the out of homes, the digital campaign. So everything, like even a, like an Instagram filter for the for the campaign um, was necessary to create from scratch. So uh, I wanted to show you guys a little bit of like the process of like a photo shoot. So uh, when you see the images, you imagine like that you arrive, the, the, the print we shot in Tokyo, uh, which was really, really nice. It was my first time there. We spent almost like three weeks, almost a month uh because we have a, we had like a typhoon in the middle so we had to stop the production and then restart again oh wow <laughs> uh, so yeah it was crazy and uh and then i want to, just to show you guys how like the from the mood board uh and then we start to craft every single shot that we're going to take there it's not like super spontaneous like you for this type of client you really have to show them look we're gonna we're gonna shot the car on the side on the front on the top so we need to plan ahead all these locations with casting so it's not so uh spontaneous as you imagine so here a couple of like images uh, uh we captured that and i think uh we wanted to bring the same like bad boy vibe that we had in the in the film into the into the into the print and the, the photographer here was the CG Watkins and the, and the, for the product shots that we shot in a studio was a, a photographer called Amos Freak. 
So that was the first one that I that I want to bring. That the car campaign made in Germany just uh, to give a little bit of a, a feeling. And then the, the the next one I wanted to bring because it's something that we did during the pandemic. So uh, imagine just in the beginning, everybody was like uh, already isolated. At the same time, the developers on Facebook, they were inventing a new feature for Messenger. Since Zoom and Teams were being used more for, uh, uh, for like a work, uh, work reason, like uh, you use Zoom for, for work and team for work. So they wanted to create a tool that, a tool that was made for friends. So they called that like messenger rooms. And then uh, we thought like everybody was at home trying to have like virtual parties, virtual dinners, virtual dates, surprise birthdays. Uh, the, the ingenuity in, in the internet during that time was, was something that was like striking to us. So the main goal of the platform was to make few that they were together even when they when they were apart, right? Like to, to give people a tool that they could like create their own types of virtual events. So we decided that uh, we wanted to use a, the, the oldest element of, of reunion that is like real pictures of group friends from, from travels, from, from weddings, from voguing balls, from night outs, from workout days. So we collect the real pictures of real friends and then we wanted to transform these uh, these moments into rooms, into messenger rooms. So once the 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 idea was approved, uh, we thought, okay, we need to find a great director to do that. A director could be give a spin to it and make it uh, uh, a little bit more unexpected. And then the name that came to our mind was uh, Michel Gondry, that it's a a uh, Oscar winning uh, director. And he was, was, I think was his first project during the pandemic. So we were shooting remotely. We sent, uh, I think 50 ca different cameras for diff for 10 different cities in the US uh, for like these 50 cast members. And uh, so at that time we were like shooting with people and then we would like go on Zoom with the casting members and then like pick a place in their house where we like the background or we would choose they, they would show their clothes and we would like choose oh use that one because it fits with the background and so on so it was like a, a lifetime experience like having this first production as you can see uh the, being a zoom call with michelle gondry was quite quite interesting and then once the idea was uh, all set director set we, we decided okay so what's the song of the commercial and then we thought that the music all together from Beatles would be uh, from the Beatles would be a great choice for the commercial, and then we went further and it was like okay, but uh, uh, let's make it even a spin on that as well, and let's invite Lizzo to record the song. Uh, so it was a really simple idea, but we uh, we tried to to bring a lot of craft, uh, and and uh, and I'm gonna show you guys now. Let me take off my. That's all. One, two, three, four. Can I have a little more? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I love you. A, B, C, D. Can I bring my friend to see? a fun one to do and then I like I kept imagining Lizzo recording a Beatles song at her house in the beginning of the pandemic. And I was so, just gonna say I'm so jealous that you guys worked with Lizzo. I love her and yeah it seems like an amazing any ad would be an amazing yeah. excuse to get in touch with Lizzo. 
for sure for sure but imagine like how afraid we were like okay uh she's gonna record the song and then we're gonna listen for the first time and like uh but uh the, i remember i received from the producer on on whatsapp and then they play and I'm like damn this is so good like she she's amazing so she nailed it she it nailed a, it yeah so for pandemic world i think it was a it was it was an interesting project to work on <laughs> so actually i have a question about your because i was taking a look at your portfolio and uh you do seem to have a lot of stories that are human centric stories right so how has this come about in your work is it something you were always drawn to um how has that sort of process been in your in your career um i think overall like when we receive a, a briefing and we start to populate with ideas in our minds or when we start receiving ideas from the creatives i think we try to I always tend to filter in the sense of like is this that relatable is it that based on a common feeling it, does it feel true to that audience so i think that's a is a great way to start to narrow a bit of like the, this human human centric human centric type of uh, type of approach uh, but uh, but to be honest with you like when it comes to storytelling i feel that i'm still developing in every day in every project and trying to learn it in different ways um, I also work with so many uh, talented writers with a very tasteful and delicate, uh, profound appreciation for storytelling. So, uh, so it's, it's something that I feel that is still developing. And then, and obviously, uh, human-centric ideas are not only in film; uh, can can be like in activations and so on. But, uh, but, uh, but I, I think that, that that's the way to go to 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 have ideas that are relatable to people. Yeah. So the topic of our, our conversation tonight is how to get a job as a creative in Chicago. So I know you've prepared something that you wanted to show us about well, how it is to live in Chicago, because a lot of us don't really know what the city is like other than the obvious movies or something like that. So yeah. maybe you could kick that off so okay, we can I'm, see I'm, Chicago I'm, through your eyes. I, I did a quick back about Chicago because honestly, uh, when we got the offer to move to Chicago, uh, and then we, when we finally um, got the chance to visit Chicago before move there, before moving there, uh, was the polar vortex. As the, there was a moment in January two thousand nineteen that was like minus thirty two degrees Celsius. So I was like, guys, I'm sorry if I visit the city with <laughs> minus thirty two degrees. Uh, I, I, I won't stay, like, uh, I, I, will, I, will, I will give up. So we moved to Chicago without visits. So for me, it was like, there's a lot of things about Chicago that I didn't know. So I'm, I'm going to try to uh, test your, your knowledge about Chicago today. And then, and if it's that obvious, you guys can correct me on the chat. Um, so I'm going to start with... Uh, you don't know, but you already love Chicago. So I got this really old school type of map, like from the 80s type of music to show where Chicago is in the map. So Chicago is literally in the middle of the US in, in an in a area that they call the Midwest. And then I also put like a, a screenshot of Google Maps here to show that like Chicago is next to a massive lake. I don't know, maybe one of the biggest lakes in the world. So when you are the lake, you literally don't see the other side that is Michigan. So you don't see that. It literally feels like uh, like oh, like the ocean. You know, like for me, that is, I'm from Sao Paulo, so I never live in the city that has beach. So for me, it was quite unique to, to, to be in a city uh, like Chicago. Uh, and then I brought here like the population of the city, which uh, compared to Sao Paulo or Berlin is, doesn't feel that big when you compare to like the skyline of the city itself. And uh, I also wanted to tell you guys that it's a city that is extremely diverse. One third of the city is Latino, one third is white, one third is black. So it's extremely diverse. Although, is a city that is extremely uh, segregated, as you see, like in this curious map uh, that I that I put in the, in the the right bottom corner. Like you see that the city is divided uh, for real. Like it is, it's kind of sad in the sense, but uh, in the other hand, you have a, a very diverse population. 
And then there is an interesting fact about Chicago. I go, I go really quick. I promise. Uh, it is uh, in in, one, in 1871, the city burned down completely. Like there was like the, the something that they call like the Great Fire of Chicago. So because of that, because the city f fell apart, they start to rebuild the city. And to rebuild the city, a lot a lot of people from the U.S. moved to the Midwest to help to rebuild the city. So in the beginning of the 19th century, the city was booming because it was uh, from there, you would like distribute products that was next to Canada and so on. So it was a city that was developing really quick. And because they had to reconstruct the city, uh, the architecture in Chicago is absolutely amazing. And uh, uh, if you see like all the, the major European architects from, from that time came to Chicago to build a, a series of, of buildings there. And, uh, and then for example, when I go to New York, like when I compare New York with Chicago, Chicago is so clean. And then, and then there's like a very simple explanation. It's because uh, when they rebuilt the city, they rebuilt the city with alleys. So for example, uh, the trash is always in the alley, so the city itself, like the, the, the sidewalks are always uh, super clean. So the architecture is something that like, I can complain a lot about Chicago about other things, but architecture and the, and the, and the, and the, and the aesthetic is truly amazing. So as, as I was telling you guys, surprisingly, Chicago has a lot of beaches. Chicago even has like a gay beach, which is crazy. It feels like almost like Ipanema during the, during the okay. summer. Although Chicago is super cold in the winter, it's like freezing cold. Like there, there is a, a monument called the Bean there. And then you see in the picture here, like it's completely frozen. Uh, and then I, I even put like these things that this challenge that people were like doing during this polar vortex, they were, they were like throwing hot water and then the water was freezing literally uh, because it was so cold that the, 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 the boiling water would freeze. Uh, there is something that I love about Chicago that is like Oprah is from Chicago. So uh, couldn't be better, right? Uh, and then all the famous fi uh, figures are from Chicago, like Walt Disney, Al Capone, Bill Murray, and then Kenny that he wants to be called Ye now, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't know Walt and, Disney was from there. Yeah, that, uh, I, I found out recently as well. Yeah. Uh, and then Robin Williams is from there, and this movie actually is in Chicago, uh, in the West Side. And then Chicago has something called Second City, that is a, a comedian, comedy club, uh, and also there's like courses for like, like stand up or, or improv. I did now uh, uh, one course, one like the first improv course to see if I improve my, my public speaking, uh, but it's, it's really nice. Like so many of the of the Saturday Night Live uh, characters, uh, actors came, comedians came from there, which is kind of kind of interesting. And the, the most special uh, couple in the world, uh, the Obamas, they are they are uh, from Chicago mm -hmm. as well. I, I'm gonna go fast now. Like Chicago is also the the, the background of like a lot of like Batman movies. So it, it uh, Chicago inspired uh, Gotham City. Chicago is where uh, House Music was born. And then uh, every time I go out in Chicago, like the music is always impeccable. It's always really, really good. So this is this is amazing. That's something you wouldn't expect, I think, unless you live there and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then obviously everybody knows about Show Rules, although I don't know anything about basketball, but I know that they are not playing uh, as well as they used to play in the 90s. And then we start talking about advertising in Chicago which for me also was a big surprise. Uh, even though like I, I knew that Liu Burnett was one of the oldest agencies in the world. Uh, I didn't know that the city had, had a, such a history with, uh, with uh, advertising. And then I found out that one of the characters that uh, one of the, 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 the professionals that inspired uh, Don Draper for, from Mad Men was um, a professional from Liu Burnett called Draper Daniels, the guy that created the mobile campaign. Uh, so yeah, that's a, a Chicago figure. So let's be practical. I know you guys want to know a little bit more about the industry in the city. So as you can see, the, the Chicago has uh, the, the main agencies in the world, like has office of all the agencies. So there is Leo, there's FCD that has, uh, has, has been doing like a great work as well. 
uh, BBDO and DDB. So they're, they're the, and I'll give you, they are the biggest agencies in Chicago uh, at the moment. And then Chicago is, I'm, I'm sure you guys know all these campaigns that are from the city that I wish I, I, I have done. So for example, uh, Tony the Tiger today, I was searching, how is Tony the Tiger in Spanish? So it was like El Tigre Tonio, I think it was the, <laughs> was the, and then in Brazil, I think it was like Tony, I don't, I don't remember actually how I was in Brazil, but we had the, the character there and it was created. Yeah, someone here you. says El Tigre Tony. El Tigre Angel, Tony, thank oh. you. Mm. <laughs> Okay, El Tony, and then obviously uh, the 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 classic mobile campaigns. They were all developed at Leo Burnett, which is which is kind of crazy. And then obviously, I don't know if you guys are too young to remember of, about the the characters of McDonald's, but like they were invented in Chicago as well. And then I remember had, those. Yeah, me too, Paula. <laughs> so, like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, well, I, I I could remove my phone to play, but like I'd not even need to play. You guys know what it is. This like the what's up campaign from from Budweiser. It's from uh, it's from some folks from Chicago, from DDB Chicago, I guess. Uh, and uh, even the, even the, one of the creatives still works in, at Olive in in Chicago. And then one of my favorite projects that came out from the city that I, I really wish I have done is the is the Van Gogh bedroom that, that they, they created inside the, the Art Institute of Chicago. This guy sitting on the bed is Michael Pittman. He still works at Leo Burnett. He's an awesome dude. Uh, and uh, and uh, I love this project. It's fucking amazing. And then also this one, I think I don't need to play. You guys know, is the ostrich from Sam Samsung uh was also created at uh, Leo Burnett and then uh you like a girl there was like a phenomenal campaign uh now the campaign for card lock for from the last Super Bowl the gun viol violence book that was like a, a, a book that would stop the 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 the, the gun the gun the crimes in in the U.S. and the craft now pay later that was like, like an awesome project also uh from craft doing the moment where the the government shut down and the 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 government employees they didn't have money like the salary to pay uh to, to buy their groceries and then craft created this like supermarket like in two days and then people would could buy their their the groceries uh even without the salary so a lot of like really iconic projects coming coming out of the of the city wow I think this one I, I will leave for the end and then I'll give you guys three things to watch about, about Chicago. <laughs> well, we can head into the 11 tips that you have, I think, and then I can ask you questions about them specifically because I know you have a really cool list of um, okay. 11 tips to get a job as a creative in, um, in Chicago. Okay, do you, wanna, do you wanna go to the list or do you wanna just fire the questions and... Well, no, I think you can show us the list or start the, the first one because I, I already have a question for the first one. Okay, let me share the list. Oof, I think it's too small. Can you all see? Yes, I can. If you guys can't see it, let us know also in the chat box a little bit. I think, I think it's fine. So the first one, I already have a question about the first one because it's embrace your identity. Your true self is what's going to make you shy. So uh, do you want to speak about it before I ask you a question or can I ask you something already? I think you can ask. Okay, perfect. So I know that you mentioned before and you wanted to talk about that also in the talk today, which I'm really happy that you've mentioned that coming out of the closet and being openly gay has helped you in your creative career. So I would love for you to be able to talk about that. I think it really relates to the first um, tip that you gave us. Oh yeah, for sure. Because I'm sure that many LGBTQ plus creatives would benefit from hearing stories like this, hearing positive stories. Um, I think quite yeah. often we tend to imagine that it's always the opposite. It's always, you know, going to be negative or, or, or... so yeah, I think it would be lovely to hear from you how that was and how it has helped you. 
Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love this question. I, I think it's, uh, uh, if I have the space to talk a little bit about that, it would be uh, f phenomenal. So uh, I think when I when I started working at the uh, TBWA in the ID TBWA, that the, was like the digital team at uh, Lulara TBWA in Brazil, there was no gay folks uh, in the creative team. So when I came out to friends and family at age 18, I felt that I couldn't do the same at work, right? Like I felt that like, because it was such keep a- Keep it separate. Male, keep it separate, like keep, be very discreet, like because it was such a male dominant environment and very, very straight. I, I didn't feel comfortable that I could be part of that gang of boys of the, the creative team. So, uh, and then it was not about like lying about myself, it was, it was about like, as I said, like just to be, I just had to be discreet because uh, nobody would be homophobic in front of me, but like people tended to to prefer that you were like a little bit more discreet at the time. So uh, honestly, one of the moments that helped me a lot uh, was when I had a, one of my first class with uh, Paulo Andre, that is uh, the, the leader at the Miami School São Paulo. You guys probably obviously uh, know him. I, th I think the fact that we had a leader uh, uh, in the industry uh, and out and about an unapologetic gay uh, was really uh, inspiring for me at the moment. And then like, I remember like just uh, after that, I think I think Paulo invited like uh, Max Lacerda that was like the president of uh, Macan Erickson in Brazil at the time. He came to, to the class to give us a brief on Coca-Cola and then that was like one more example of like, okay, um, uh, I, I can be out and about also, uh, also in the at, at work in your professional life, yeah, for sure. My, my, That's my professional life. <laughs> and and then and then suddenly I start to understand that like being gay and have a different uh, experience and different POV would only help my work. So I, I started like literally. Uh, embrace that and um, and then a very personal uh, part here I think creative speaking when you are like in a, in a brainstorm session uh, it, brainstorm session is made for you like to share ideas thoughts inside like the first thing that came to your head without overthinking because someone's going to bring something else and then someone's going to bring uh, on top of it and then you're going to come up with an idea together so these sessions they are based on lifetime experiences you know like you share the thing you did in the weekend you share the date you had in the last night the night before so uh it's very it's a very personal type of conversation and you have to be uh, i have to feel free right to 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 yeah you have to be comfortable to share those personal experiences for sure yeah. so so to be fully present in this brainstorm like uh with my fellow writer as I, I most of them straight guys I started just oversharing like I start to tell everything that I <laughs> that I like that I, I uh, everything about my life with them like uh, and then because of that I, I I think you you became more creative just because of the fact you're being more honest and more more sincere uh, and then after that I start like analyzing the job offers with uh, with a different eye so then i start to say no to agencies that i felt that, like the environment was not diverse enough or was too much too much of like a straight male oriented space or no girls whatsoever in the in the team and um for example I remember when i when i got approached by this agency in in berlin anthony uh, to work with mercedes and then uh, uh, I remember I told my creative director, Alice, and the manager director, uh, Matthias Schmid, I was like, guys, I don't want to work with car brands. It's like, it's not my thing. I think it wouldn't be a great fit. And then I remember that their answer was like, no, it's, it's actually is exactly that. We need someone with like a, a different point of view for car brands. If not this brand, we will also not uh, modernize or survive, right? Like, so they need to start receiving the point of view from 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 different folks. So that's that was I guess when I start on the center, like okay, I can really be myself and this, and then bring my point of view uh, would help. And I, and I'm glad I had like a lot of people that was like super open minded and 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 I saw a lot of friends from agency evolving in the sense, 
stop doing uh, those like homophobic jokes that, that, that were actually uh, not fun. And yeah. then obviously- So it's like your uh, presence like, there or, or, or you know, diversity actually does improve the culture at the agency. People do learn and grow and evolve from, from that. Yeah, and then, and then also like obviously, uh, uh, it's very clear in my head that it's just my case and I'm, uh, I'm very privileged as well, even as a, uh, as a white gay man, like uh, uh, it was really easy to overcome these because of the time being. Also the world changed a lot in the last 10 years and uh, because I'm, I'm white and Latino, life gets easier sometimes for me. So I think uh, we have, uh, we industry as itself, we have a lot of to develop in this aspect. You know, like I can imagine how is to be the only woman in the in the creative team or something that is uh, even more often like the lack of like black and brown fo folks in the agencies. Um, like I, I can count in one hand the number of folks that I worked with so far in the industry. So we have a we have a, a long road in this in this aspect. For sure, for sure. But that's but thank you so much for sharing. I think that's so important. And uh, and I mean I know it's not the same thing, but I know in past talks we've had people asking, you know, but as a foreigner, as a Latin American, am I going to be embraced at the agency or is it going to be a problem? Are they going to be prejudiced or not? We've gotten a few, quite a few questions like that. So it's, I think it's really cool that you bring that sort of embrace your identity and then look for agencies that are open to that and will value that diversity and that international point of view to yeah. add more to the agency rather than keep it sort of very American or very German or very this or very that, or anyway, to keep it sort of pigeonholed in that culture. Yeah, no, and I, and I, and I feel that we, we as Latinos, we struggle so much with the language sometimes, and then we, we try to lose our accents and so on. And actually uh, people are not caring so much. Uh, if you are able to, to sell your ideas and, 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 and give your soul and love to the things, uh, I, th I think it's enough, you know, like you, you can embrace your roots. I, I think the, the, and your, and your, and your, your different point of view. So I think that was, uh, the, the, one of my main tips. Yeah. You have it here on uh, number nine, focus on the vocabulary. The accent is your charm. So you felt like it was, it's helped you sort of not helped you, but, um, I mean, I, I'm giving this as a tip, but I've still struggled a lot with that. Like, I really, <laughs> like, um, it's, it's different from Europe, like working in Europe in this sense was much easier because English was the second language of everybody. So everybody oh. kind of would speak a broken English. In right. The everybody has like, their own strong accent. Yeah, exactly. So in the sense, like I, uh, I think it was easier there. But when I got here, like I was like, OK, now I have to literally improve my English. I had to think that I, when I moved to Berlin, my English was really bad. So I think I learned it like a german type of english so when i got into the us i, I had to relearn a lot of things as well <laughs> amazing all right take us through the next ones then um yeah student awards experimental projects and spread the message what's your next big thing um first of all i think throughout my career uh i never waited for like the perfect briefing like i, I always try to do my my personal projects and send over to magazines, to blogs, and to to some other professionals. Like uh, I remember, for example, I, I used to I used to love the coffee at the uh, Suplicy Cafe. This is like a coffee shop in São Paulo. And then I went to their website and was like, oh my god, this this website is horrible. And then I sent them like an offer, like, hey, can I do your website? And then I did their website as a freelancer, and then I submitted to awards. So I, 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 in this sense, I was never waiting for the perfect briefing to arrive. I was like doing myself, doing like illustrations and artworks and sending to magazines because I actually started like really early. I started like at age like 15, 16. I had already uh, my first job as an intern in a small studio. And uh, even, even when I say spread the message, I say like, don't think twice to send uh, an email to someone that you admire the work you know like sometimes people don't answer because they are extremely busy but sometimes they read and then they they, they invite you for, for for a conversation you know and then the what's your next big thing 
it's uh, it's something that I learned with Liz Taylor that is now she was my boss at uh, Leo and now she's uh, uh, the global CCO at Ogivi. And then she was like, always like, what's what's your big? You always need to know what's your big thing, you know? Like when you're working, you no, know, and then you don't have that thing you're passionate about. I think that's the moment that you need. Oh no, I I need, I need to have an idea that I want to that I want work to work on. For. Yeah, work on. Awesome. Um, you want to jump? Do you want to go? <laughs> the, the second. No, I mean that's fine. I think find references out of, out of advertising. I think I we we've heard that uh, from a few people too. To like you know expand your interests beyond specific advertising references and look at photography and film and and just yeah. really look beyond um, the obvious. <laughs> I suppose yes, ex uh, for sure. Like I had a I had a boss once that every time that I would bring a, a mood board, if she sees something that was from advertising, she was like, no, delete it. You have to find something that is not from advertising because if it's in advertising, someone already did. So like, uh, that was that was a good way to- A good lesson. Searching like in, in, in books and magazines and so on. Obviously you need to know uh, about the, 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 the award shows and all the, 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 the annual, how is January in English? Is January? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So all the annuaries. Uh, so you need to know because if not, you're gonna come up with the same ideas. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I think truly, uh, I, I think for for us that has the desire to move abroad, it's easier to have like a range of reference because uh, if you lived in Colombia and then afterwards you did a quarter away in Spain. And then afterwards, you uh, you move to to Europe or the U.S. You start to like absorb a number of of reference from different places. So I think it, it, it's a very natural for people with this with this desire. Yeah, yeah, because you're, you're naturally looking at what there is and to and, and sort of exploring and looking. So I think it would be good now to sort of get the really practical side of getting a job in um in chicago for example because that's your experience so when you mention you know build solid work in your local agency find a headhunter um can you kind of take us through that process so that any, anyone who's interested in doing the same thing can kind of learn and, and get some tips uh do's and don'ts something that you said god i wish i had knew known about this uh, before yeah. I started the process. And I think it's also really great if we talk about the visa, if you're okay with that, because yeah, that's also course. another process in itself. It is, definitely it is. Uh, I think uh, Europe and the US is really different in this sense. I think uh, to work in the US, you really need to have more of a solid work to get your visa approved. Mm -hmm. But uh, my first tip to work in the US, I know that sounds really old school, but uh, is the way the agencies still work in, in the US, you might need to find a cop partner to find a job together. Like, uh, I think this is still like, I see uh, the agency rather hire a team instead of hire a uh, one hour director or And one then have writer. to find a match. And then have to find a match. So, uh, uh, and, and then, when you start to search for your uh, for your partner, partner try to find someone that is doesn't think like you or doesn't have the same reference and the same pace like you. Uh, I think that's that's a, that's a, a, when you when you have teams that are like just look alike and listen to the same music and go to the same museums and uh, travel to the same places, they end up having the, the same uh, thoughts, right? You know, like so. Uh, don't be afraid of like having a partner that uh, it's very different from you. I think that would be the the first one in this process of like looking for a job. And then the the, the PR part that I was like mentioning, um, I think first part, you can do your, the job yourself, like to spread the word with your personal projects. Um, uh, I, and I, I, so I, I was telling you guys that the story about the, the Suplicy Cafe, but I like, when I, when I got in Berlin, I was already working for quite some time. And then I had friends like organizing a party for, uh, uh for the refugees to, to raise money for the refugees, like right in the, in the moment of the refugee crisis in 2015. 
So uh, we, I did all the artwork for the party and so on. And then, and then we, uh, the, the topic of the party became an article in New York Times. So that became one more thing in, 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 my, in my book somehow, because it was like such a small thing, it was just a flyer for a party, but then it ended up becoming something bigger because of the topic around it. So keep doing your personal projects and doing and try to do a PR off, out of that. Uh, uh, and then try to build a solid work in your, in your, local, uh, in your local agency. I think that's really important. Uh, yeah, I remember when, in my process of getting the O-1 visa, the, at least my lawyer <laughs> told me that it was important to show that you're valued in your country, yeah, how much exactly. value you have there back home. So it's not even just about what you publish, let's say in the US, but oh, wow, she's like special in Brazil too, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and then on top of that, I think, Advertising industry is a really small industry. Everybody knows each other. So like you need to build the, the relationships because you're gonna need a, a lot of like uh, recommendation letters. And these recommendation letters, they should be really specific. They really need to uh, 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 embrace you and talk about you in a way that uh, uh, you, you, you almost feel like a, they call it a special alien uh, so uh, it's important to keep these relationships because uh, they will, will help you to get the, the visa approved when 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 you get the, the job offer and I'll, I'd also like to mention awards and publications because I know those are important and I wrote down like you have um, publications in fast company at age creativity days and confused communication arts anyway the list is long um, so so in your experience, this has helped you sort of what oh, tips do you have for in terms of awards and um, publications? That, uh, definitely helps. But I, but, uh, uh, I think for these type of publications you need to be realistic. You only get that when the agency is working behind and, and promoting the projects with the right uh, PR uh, agencies and people. And uh, I think for to, to have your campaigns i think the agency that you work with uh, will, will be doing this this job for you mm -hmm. uh, in the end of the day nice what's next <laughs> uh, something else that is really curious that is happening in the industry right now and uh, i didn't try that yet <laughs> uh, but i see for example I have a former boss working at Apple. I have a former partner working at TikTok. I have so many friends working at Facebook or, or uh, at Google, uh, I think, or friends that worked at Spotify. So creatives think, moving to, to sort of tech industry yeah. too? And, then, and I think agencies will give you the strength and the agility that you need to like to come up with ideas, to build bags, to, to sell your work. But, uh, but now the, the industry has more than the agencies, you know, like you, you, you can be creative, you can be a writer, uh, art director, a creative director inside the uh, different companies, you know, like, so um, that's also uh, an interesting way to, to look for a job outside of uh, uh, your hometown. Mm -hmm. And broaden the horizons beyond advertising. Definitely. So now I want to ask you about very um, specific things about Chicago, if you can, like how, because we're not there, how do you see the Chicago market in terms of advertising agencies? What do you think people are looking for? And especially now you're a creative director. So I'm sure like the specifications of your job has changed. And now you probably look at that maybe more than other things. So what are people looking for and what are you looking for when you're hiring someone in Chicago? What are some of the characteristics and attributes that can stand out? Yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I think obviously we uh, are always looking for talented people, but uh, I think as I, I spoke so many times today already about like people with a diverse background is something that is really important nowadays. Uh, to 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 build a team that is uh, diverse in its nature and in terms of like uh, 
uh, ratio, uh, even at age groups. I think sometimes uh, we end up having like a too young group that is like uh, another issue that engages if people with experiences can bring like a, a great uh, point of view as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I think people with different backgrounds and uh, and then uh, people passionate about the business. Sometimes I I I I, I feel a lack of like excitement and uh, and uh, for the industry. So I think people that are, that is uh, believes that uh, advertising is a really fun industry to work with. Like for example, I was last week in Barcelona. Now I'm Mexico City. You know, like it, it, it's uh, for, I was producing a campaign there. Uh, so it, it is a, it's a it's an, it's an industry that really allows you to live anywhere in the world. Like I have so many friends that are uh, lawyers and doctors, and uh, they have great careers, but they are, they cannot like just simply move to to a different continent. So um, I feel like passion in the industry is something uh, is really important right now when we are searching for professionals. Amazing. <laughs> um... And I would like to know also sort of what changed with you becoming a creative director. What do you think is the thing that changed the most in terms of your creative process or how you just something that maybe you had to leave behind and adapt? Because the nature of the job, I feel like it's so different, right? Like if you're creating ideas every day or if you're a creative director, also creating ideas, but then managing a group of people. Yeah. It's a different set of skills. I, I, I think... The first part of this question, like I think I, I never felt, oh my God, I'm ready to be creative director. I feel like the the responsibility comes first, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, and then you start, you learn doing somehow. Like yeah, uh, um, I, I honestly think that when when you become creative director, this is where the fun starts. This is where you can truly. Uh, put a bit more uh, out there of yourself. You can fight for the ideas you believe. You can bring uh, your vision to the brand. You can create a team uh, to work for a specific brand with a different mentality. I think that literally it's where the, the fun starts. But like for me, I was really lucky to have like so many great creative directors throughout my career, you know, like Rodrigo Jateni at Wonderman. And then I had like uh, uh, Domenic Massareto was my first boss, and then Echo and uh, Alexandre and uh, and and Gorgilio opt obviously at Africa. I had so many great bosses that like I could learn from each of them to build my own way to work. So from some from some I, I learned like the human side. For some other, I learned like the presentation skills. Mm -hmm. For some other, like or craft like, or something like that. Like yeah, for example, now uh, I work with Adriano, uh, Leo, and then uh, uh, Adriano is a is a guy super focused on awards, and you learn with that. Uh, some some with some others, you will, you learn about like ethics, and some others with like ambition and how to read the room. So like you you get a little bit of each of your bosses and then you you try to to emulate. make make your own special unique mix too right because then you're Caio and you create yeah. your own version of yeah, all of it, that it, it, it is it is a value that you become a professional like it's a, it's a melting pot of of all your experiences yeah so i have three quick questions about tips now so just a few more tips before we go into our final minutes, because I know you also want to show some uh, references, some movies and things about Chicago. So okay. I want to ask you, what advice do you have now for an art director that's trying to sort of perfect their craft or put their portfolio together? Because I mean, we all kind of know the basic tips. Is there anything that you think is very current right now or something that is more recent that uh, could be an interesting tip for someone who's still crafting their portfolio i mean mm -hmm. we're all crafting our portfolios you know always yeah. but uh I, I think what is interesting about portfolio in this industry is that it's like a ever-changing thing you know like it, it it never stops you never stop like changing and remove stuff and add stuff to your to your portfolio you should really like put some effort to that because nowadays what i feel is like i see the portfolio i love it and then i was like okay let's have a conversation like 
we end up not even talking about the work that is in the portfolio. So that's why it's so important to have like a concise uh, way to present uh, your work. And it, it shows that, that you can, if you can build your stuff in a way that is enjoyable to, to watch, it, it shows that also you can do uh, a, a, cl a client presentation. Mm, I see, thinking more about the experience of the person that's viewing your portfolio. Yeah, so yeah, Interesting. I think, should always be updating and so on. Yeah. Uh, one last tip that I want to ask you. So I know it's been a while since you've done sort of the first steps of moving abroad, but if you could recall back then sort of what was your number one obstacle or something that you can leave as sort of parting advice for those that are thinking of starting and then for them to not want to give up, you know, uh, can you kind of place yourself back then and remember what you told yourself to stay motivated and to push through those possible obstacles. Yeah, uh, I think that's a, <laughs> a long as I will not be that quick. But I think uh, obviously when you start in a new job abroad, like uh, you you have the syndrome of impostor. You're like, oh my god, what I'm doing with my life? Like yeah. people are gonna find out that I don't have great ideas. I remember when I started, I have like a hard drive with all my uh, fonts and PSDs and uh, files. And like, I would like, oh my God, this is, if I don't have this, I cannot be a, an art director, you know? And in the end of the day, you would never use the, the hard drive. It's like, just to, to give the sense of like, okay, if I need uh, a hand with a phone, is there like to help me to, to, solve, to solve the problems. I think the language you always have, you always, you will always improve, you know? Like it's something that you shouldn't feel uh, intimidated by intimidated about it uh and then and then i, I think uh, i didn't talk that much about that but like the personally speaking it's very satisfying to work in an industry that allows you to do so so like uh, you made so many friends along the way uh, uh when, when you so it, it really pays off to have an, an experience abroad not even to like for two years or three years in a different culture, different different language, this will really make you a, a, a better professional, I guess. Yeah, no, that's very true. That's very true. When I look back on my experiences abroad, the things that do stand out the most are the relationships yeah, and the yeah. friends I keep in, like friend in Egypt and a friend in in Q and just all these places in the world. And you're like, wow. <laughs> I, I think the world itself is getting ready for expats, you know, like I think every time I move it's easier, you know, like there is an app to rent an apartment and there is an app for something else, you know, like you don't suffer as much as the, in the beginning. As previous like, generations, you, you, for you, sure. As previous generations, I guess. Definitely. And, and, that, and also you are always in contact with your family and friends, you know, like there's not like this, I don't, I don't feel that I, I lack information from Brazil now, you know, like I feel really part of the, the same narrative and conversation yeah amazing all right so you want to talk about your final tips before we wrap up okay guys uh just if you're interested about chicago i would recommend you first a documentary this documentary is is on amazon prime it's called the city that sold america and it's a phenomenal uh documentary about chicago and its story and then the, how the city developed and all the the, the famous uh, campaigns that were done there so I, I truly recommend it's a one hour documentary so it's like really easy to watch and then a talk with a true Chicagoan I don't know if you guys know we probably you know like Virgil Abelo uh, he's a phenomenal uh, stylist creative director uh, and uh, there is like this speech from him uh, at Columbia University and then he's a guy from Chicago that went abroad. So uh, you, can, you can learn a lot about like the influences of the culture in the city uh, in his work. So uh, uh, I think he's one of the, like the, the talents of, uh, of our generation. And the last one, uh, it's really enjoyable to watch. It's a thriller that the, they just did a, a comeback that is Candyman. I don't know, probably you guys haven't seen that. It's from the eighties. Uh, but uh, was a was a, a, a thriller from the eighties. And now the, the Jordan Peele and Nia Da Costa, they did a, a remake and it shows Chicago in a very interesting way. Uh, so I, I, I don't know if it's already out in, 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 in Latin America, but, uh, but uh, I truly recommend Candyman. It's really fun. 
Amazing. <laughs> awesome, Caillou. So I want to thank you so, so, so much for, for sharing your experience, for sharing, you shared so much valuable information, not just about, you know, the city. That was totally new for our Nomad Talks to have information about the city too. So that was really, really cool. And, uh, and yeah, thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you for being here tonight. If you want to say a few final words to everybody who stayed. No, thank you. Thank you guys. Like, uh, it's really, really fun to share a little bit of my expat experience. And I, I, I wish you guys like in this, in this journey, but, uh, uh, it is, it is not as easy as it, as it sounds, but it, it really, uh, pays off. Yeah. I, but I think usually idea. people actually do the opposite. They, from what I hear and talking to my students, it's usually that people think it's very, very difficult. So I try to be encouraging, you know, because a lot of times, a lot of the obstacles we imagine are not even there. Yeah. There are obstacles, but sometimes there are a lot of things that we imagine will happen yeah. and they never do. <laughs> yeah, and, and even in the world we live in, right? You know, like we can, we cannot plan ahead anything, you know, like, uh, so uh, it's, it's really tricky at the moment, but um, I hope I, I, we end up working together at some point with one of you guys. Yes, you're getting a lot of thank yous here in the chat. So I think it was very inspiring for everyone. So thank you so thank much, you. everyone who thank was here Paul. as well. And you guys thank stuck you around. Paul. Thank you so much. And uh, be sure to check into the next Nomad Talks as well. And just to answer Isabella's question, since we're already here, um, Isabella, it's going to be on the YouTube channel for those who want to see this again and other Nomad Talks that we have with similar um, themes. Usually we focus on international careers and how to move abroad and stuff. You can watch it on the U Miami Ad School Argentina YouTube channel. So it's really easy to find. And then you just have to look for the Nomad Talk videos. And that's the series that, I ho that I'm the host of with a bunch of different guests that are all former Miami Ad School students like our special guest tonight. So <laughs> Miguel, Miguel is saying hire me. <laughs> Send your portfolio, Miguel. Shoot, uh, shoot an email, man. Don't hesitate. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the invitation, Bernardo and Paulo, of course. Of Thank course. you, Paulo, for hosting. No worries. Thank you so much. Really oh, someone's asking for your email. I can or, leave in the chat. Yeah. I can leave in the chat. Yeah. I also left his LinkedIn, you guys, in the way earlier. There you go. Perfect. So good night, guys. Thank you for everyone who was Thank here. You. Bye bye. And take care, everyone. Bye. bye. Good night. Ciao.